Okay guys, so the main thing I wanted to show you is exactly what it takes for us to process an engine here at Flat 6 Innovations to perform one of our reconstruction procedures. Now here we are with the components from our R40 Flat 6 Innovations Stage 2 engine. Now this is for the Focus on IMS Bearing Failure video series and this is the 29,000 mile black original owner 996 that suffered an IMS bearing failure and of course you've been able to see the other videos in this series. So now I'm coming to you from the machine shop here at Flat 6 Innovations where I have our CWT Industries computer assisted balancing equipment that you see behind me and this is the latest and greatest from CWT has all their newest software on it all the newest hardware on it I've actually had the bed of this machine for almost 17 years now and we've continually updated it so one thing that makes us different than everybody else is we are able to handle these tasks in-house so if you had a normal shop doing this work somebody who wasn't set up to be an engine factory and they primarily worked on vehicles they would have to farm this job out to another individual, another shop, they would have to sublet this out and then they lose control over a very critical aspect of engine assembly and machining practices. So that's something we don't have to do here at Flat 6. So having control over all the aspects of building one of these engines and doing it in-house and with this engine it's one of the R-series engines meaning I'm doing it personally and basically that gives us the control and the accountability and responsibility to ensure everything is done properly. We know our machine is calibrated properly. We know all the components are going to be indexed as they were basically assembled here in the balancer so we can stamp these items and put them right back where they were when we assemble the engine. That's critical. A typical balance shop doesn't do that. A typical engine shop doesn't do that. A typical car shop can't do that. So that is another thing that makes the flat six difference what it is. So with this set of components you see behind me and some others we will be adding to this assembly as we move forward with the balancing process, I just want you to understand that we have two different types of balance. We have dynamic balance, which is basically all the things that are rotating crankshaft speed. And then we have reciprocating balance the components that are going to reciprocate. That's where we bring the connecting rods into the equation and the pistons into the equation. Doing the dynamic assembly here in the balancer and spinning this up as it will be in the engine makes this engine have the best smooth operation possible. It also helps to make sure you don't have false knock induced by the knock sensors that end up having a ignition retard event occur. So the smoother this engine runs, the less interference, the less static is picked up by the knock sensors and the more net power you receive because the knock sensors are not falsely backing down ignition timing, trying to kill detonation that the knock sensors think is occurring. That detonation really isn't occurring. The out of balance harmonics are creating that out of balance scenario and you end up having the knock sensors pick that up. So this is next level engine building, next level development. These are the things that the other guys don't know because they don't know them. So what we're going to do here is we're going to assemble everything in the balancer. We already have the crankshaft here. We have our front accessory, our crankshaft pulley on the engine, and we have our dual mass flywheel. So this is the majority of the dynamic mass, okay? And I've already spun this up and it came in to about 17 grams out of balance, okay? Now that is way outside of what we would expect. Now keep in mind that these are components that were originally put together with an engine, okay? So it's not uncommon to have an engine this out of balance from the factory. That is what the job of this 37 pound dual mass flywheel is, is to help cancel out some of these harmonics that were created because the engine components were not balanced as well as we will balance them from the factory. This heavy dual mass flywheel helps to cancel them out. However, if we make this engine more be better balanced, the dual mass flywheel makes the engine run even smoother, okay? So we still have to add our pressure plate onto this assembly to finish it up. So now I'm gonna go ahead and initiate a spin. We're gonna see how far out of balance this thing actually is.
Okay, 17.437 grams out of balance. Now we have our tolerance set to two tenths of one ounce per inch. That means we're gonna have to have this gram count down below about 1.25 grams or so on the rear to get into balance of tolerance. On the front, we're only 4.13 grams out of balance. And this is normal because we have a much lighter, smaller diameter component on the front, being our crankshaft pulley, where in the rear we have a larger diameter, 37 and a half pound dual mass flywheel, as basically correcting the plane off the rear of the crankshaft. Okay, so this is normal. So now we're going to start removing some material from the flywheel. And as we remove material from the flywheel, that will also help the overall balance of everything. Now, one thing I do want to make you guys understand is all these components are first balanced individually. We get them all balanced to tolerance individually, like the crankshaft by itself, as an example, and get that down to the two-tenths of one ounce per inch of, of imbalance, basically, before we start adding them together. As you add items onto this dynamic assembly, it will increase the out of balance or the imbalance for the assembly, okay? So now that I've got this really big number here with everything put on as factory, I'm gonna save this as my first spin, okay? So that way I can print this out later for my customer or for the new owner of this car, and he will see exactly what we were able to do from beginning to end, beginning being as the components were from the factory and end being as they have left my facility here at Flat Six Innovations. So now we're gonna remove some material and get started. We have completed the dynamic balancing of the flywheel, the crankshaft, and the front accessory. So the next step is we've added the pressure plate, the clutch plate as we call it. And Usually the clutch plate is the most out of balance component in the entire dynamic assembly. We see that from a quality control perspective and just basically the fact that this has got big heavy springs in it and they're not well balanced from the factory. So we take the pressure plate and we change the index of it several times till we find the position where the pressure plate is in the best plane of balance when installed on the flywheel. That's what we've done now. We've, we've recently just spun it up and we are 3.49 grams out of balance and nowhere near our balance to tolerance zone of 0.2 ounces per inch, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is remove some material from the 12 o'clock position of the pressure plate, which is where the computer is telling me to remove this material. It also has told me how much material to remove. So now I'm gonna grind some material away and we're gonna work to get this pressure plate and the dynamic assembly balanced to tolerance. I'll show you how to do it. Let's give that a shot. So as we work to our goal, we're trying to get the dynamic assembly balanced to a tolerance of ounces per inch of radius. We're going through an analyzing sequence at this time. And now the dynamic assembly is balanced to the tolerance that we are shooting for. So at this point in time, we're going to be able to move forward with balancing our connecting rods and the pistons as the reciprocating components in this assembly. Okay, so now that we've completed our final spin and we are balanced to tolerance, as you see here, we're going to save this as last spin. Now we can go over to a screen where we'll be able to look at exactly what was done before and after. So the numbers that you see represented on this side is basically, this is the before for the flywheel end of things, and this is the after for the flywheel side of things. And this is the crank pulley side before, crank pulley side after, okay? So if you look there, let's just say 7,000 RPM. Originally, we were 17.437 grams out of balance, okay? Now we come down to 7,000 RPM, and we look at that same figure, and the force in pounds is only 24.39 pounds out of balance, okay? 
and that is to this particular tolerance of balance. Now, we look at the right side, 7,000 RPM before resulted in 38 pounds. 7,000 RPM now results in 25 pounds. So these two average numbers together is what has given us our balance to tolerance for this R40 Raby Flat 6 Innovations Porsche 996 engine. So now we're going to move forward with balancing the pistons and the connecting rods for the reciprocating components of this assembly. Now I'm weighing the rod overall, and this will allow me to do the mathematics to ensure that the balance is correct for the, all six rods to have the same overall balance, the same balance on the big end, and the same balance on the small end. And the specification for this is one half of one gram for all six connecting rods that will be used in this engine. Final step in balancing the dynamic and reciprocating masses for this engine is to balance all of the pistons and the piston pins. So in this particular situation, we have a balance tolerance of one half of one gram for all six pistons for a deviation. So between the lightest and heaviest piston, my maximum allowable is one half of one gram. Out of the box, the pistons were further than one half of one gram out of balance. And luckily, so were our piston pins. So like we are almost always able to do with these R40 components, which actually have the tightest tolerance of manufacture, we were able to swap the heaviest piston pins with the lightest pistons and vice versa. So we were able to do what we call the pin toss method. And these pins will now be installed into these pistons during assembly. And in that situation, the piston pins and the pistons have now been balanced to within 0.5 grams. So our lightest piston and piston pin assembly is 539.1 grams. And our heaviest piston assembly with a pin is 539.6 grams, exactly one half of one gram and that is the allowable tolerance for this specification of engine build. So I was not in a position where I had to remove material from these pistons. Swapping pins between pistons did everything we needed to do to get to my balance tolerance. With this, the reciprocating and dynamic balancing procedures have been completed. So of course, we want to invite you to subscribe to our channel and we want you to click that join button because what that does, it gives you that exclusive content that are, is not available to a regular YouTube subscriber. You're only going to get that if you click join to join the Renvision family. So certainly want to thank you for coming into my world and enjoying these videos. There's nothing I like better than showing you a little piece of what I get to see every day.